So let's take a look at the basic ideas in doing arithmetic on functions. So we're in section 1.6 looking at problem 2 which is on page 132 and there are four parts to this problem. They give us an f of x and a g of x. f of x is defined to be 1 minus x squared and g of x is defined to be x plus 1. For the first part, for part A, we're supposed to look at the function f plus g evaluated at minus 1, where x is minus 1. So in order to do this, evaluating the function f plus g at any point is just evaluating f at this x value and evaluating g at this x value and adding up the results. It's almost as if this minus 1 is being distributed to f and g. So all we have to do is plug in minus 1 in for x in f of x here so this is 1 minus minus 1 squared and then instead of g of minus 1 we'll write in what g is except x is going to be replaced by minus 1 so we have minus 1 squared is just 1 and this is minus 1 plus 1 is 0 so this is just 0 that f plus g at negative 1 is 0 and that's all there is to it part b asks you to look at f minus g evaluated at x equals 0 and it's the same thing in order to do f minus g at a point you just evaluate f at that point and g at that point and subtract the results so f of 0 that's going to become 1 minus 0 squared then minus g of 0 that's going to be 0 plus 1 so what do we get? well 0 squared is just 0 so this is 1 minus 0 minus 0 plus 1 is just 1 and so we have 1 minus 1 which is 0 so again coincidentally we get 0 that f minus g evaluated at the point x equals 0 gives us a y value of 0 and just to finish this problem off but it's basically all just the same thing just with different operations here f times g at 2 is part c and as you might guess in order to evaluate multiplication of functions you just do f of 2 and g of 2 and multiply these two results together. So f of 2 is going to give us 1 minus 2 squared and g of 2 is going to give us 2 plus 1. So this is 1 minus 4 times 3 so it's minus 3 times 3 and this is minus 9. And now finally for the last part of this f over g at 1 and as you might guess this is just look at what f of 1 is 
find out what g of 1 is, and then divide the 2. f of 1 is 1 minus 1 squared. g of 1 is 1 plus 1. So this is 1 minus 1 on top. On bottom we have 2. So that's 0 over 2, which is coincidentally, again, 0. Now, you can generalize this because we don't necessarily have to have a specific, x, a specific x value in mind. For example, if we take a look at problem 6 on the same page, they tell us, in this case, f of x is defined to be 2x minus 1 and g of x is defined to be x squared. And they ask, in part a, to find f plus g. And if you want f plus g, this is just the same thing as f plus g of x. So we find out what f of x is, find out what g of x is, and then add the results. So we're going to do f of x and g of x and combine the two results with addition. f of x is just 2x minus 1 and g of x is x squared. So we get 2x minus 1 plus x squared, or if we write this in a kind of standard form, where the highest powers of x come first, then we get the following. And the same thing is true of part b, where you do f minus g just think of this as f minus g of x, and all you're going to do is find f of x and then subtract g of x. For part c, it's f times g of x. Well, that's just going to be f of x times g of x. d is f over g of x, which is going to be f of x over g of x, and e is g over f. So this time g will be on the top of the fraction and f will be on the bottom. And you just keep plugging in what f is, what g is, and simplify if possible. And you'll get the answers for A, B, C, D, and E in part six.